students, we are on to Dr. OJ's tutorial class. In this tutorial video, we shall have a look at Lebeck's Mayo, which is uh, one of the topics in uh, MTS uh, 424. Um, after subscribing to this video, click on the notification button so that each time I upload new video, you'll be daily notified. Uh, stay blessed. Now, I want to start with introduction to Lebeck's measure. Uh, but before we go into introduction to Lebeck's measure, before we start this, uh, defining what Lebeck's measure is, uh, we need to understand uh, some basic concepts of uh, Lebeck's measure. Uh, we need to discuss about uh, characteristic functions, we need to discuss about uh, step functions, and we equally need to discuss about simple functions. But before we go into all this, we actually need to understand the concept, you know, on which Lebesgue's measure uh, rests, and um, we that will take us to the knowledge of a real uh, set of real numbers. And uh, before we discuss the set of real numbers, there, as far as Lebesgue's measure is concerned, uh, we need to understand what we mean by intervals, you know, because uh, uh, you know Lebesgue's measure is uh, you know is a measure. That is placed on the set of real numbers, and when we talk of real numbers, there's no way you talk, we, we talk about uh, intervals. So, and uh, in this uh, this particular le uh, video uh, lecture video, we want to look at um, the the basis of this particular uh, intervals. So, possibly we may have different types of intervals, and basically they are four in general. So, uh, we can say that uh, an interval is a set of uh, let's 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 just define this concept. We call that an interval in the set R, you know, an interval, an interval in the set R, in the set R. What do you mean by set R? You know, that set of real numbers can be any of the following uh, sets, you know. It is a set, it is a set, an interval is a set which has, um, which has one of the following which has one of the following properties, or which has one of the following, uh, you know, uh, forms, or the following four forms. So that means an interval. Let's start with this. The very first one, this is a closed interval. I call this one a closed interval. It's a set of the form picking any point in the real number, you know, such that, um, let's say, the the, 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 the uh, what do you call it? The bounds, you know, the hands of the interval. You know, this is the head, the, the, the first point there, the second one. This is the beginning and this is the hand. So we have the hands of the interval, A, you know, less than or equals to X, less than or equals to B. This is uh, for the first one. And what we are seeing here is that uh, we have, this interval is called a closed interval. It is closed because you can see the square bracket here. And for the fact that if you pick any uh, any points in that interval, suppose the point you pick is, you know, we have, the interval is on the real number, so it's on the real line, so we pick uh, a point X. So this closed interval A comma B is a what? It's a set. It's a set on its own. And, uh, you know, a set is, um, is represented by a curly bracket, so such that... Uh, Picking a point in the real number. Don't forget, this closed interval is a subset of this R. So X coming from this interval can be defined this way. So let's look at the second one. Let's look at the second one. A half closed interval. A half closed. It is called half closed. As you can see, that uh, this point is closed. This uh, end point A is closed, while the end point B is open. You can see this is closed because we use a curly, I mean we use a square bracket here why the simple bracket is used for this. So picking another point, it's still the same point X, but you know, we want to define it with respect to this, such that A less than equal to that X, you know, and X will be less than B. This is another what? It's another set. It's another set. You can see that this is not closed here because uh, it is open. This is what we call what? We call it half open or half closed interval. Let's look at the third one. Third one is open interval. Open interval. So you have what? It's a set such that uh, having a point, picking a point within this interval, such that uh, the end point A less than X 
and x less than the b. That's how we define what the open uh, set. You know, uh, this this one is just this, this one is taken from the topology of the open set. And when we say a set is open, I believe you know what we are talking about. That it means that any point you pick in that particular uh, you know a set will be a center of an open ball. So that means an open ball can be found in that particular uh, interval a comma b. So la the last one is um, the last one is uh, also half open or half closed. So you can see it is open at uh, endpoint a and closed at uh, endpoint b. So we can define this as what a set you know of uh, x. Is it x is in the real number which is in, you know within this uh, interval such that um, a less than what less than x and s less than equal to b you can see that at this point b is uh, is closed the point b is closed now in each of these cases in each of these cases a and b are referred to as endpoints in each of these cases a and b are referred to as endpoints uh, while b minus a b minus a is a length of the interval because each of these cases a and b like i've told you are regarded as f points while b minus a is the length of the interval so we also recall that if e let's recall that if e suppose if e is a set suppose if e is a set or you know, is a set let's say if e is a set you know e is a set then the characteristics uh, then the characteristics function the characteristic function, you know, the characteristic function, the characteristic function uh, of E, of this particular E, is a function, is a function. Now, we want to define what a characteristic function is. So, it's a function chi E defined by, defined by, we want to define a characteristic function, the chi E defined by. You know, this is set E. The chi E defined by let's say, uh, point X, it will be equal to one if X is in that E, if X is in that E, and it will be equal to zero if S is not in the E. You know, if X is not in that E. I hope you understand this. So this has brought us to the introduction of both characteristics and function. Like we have already said here, we discussed the concept of uh, the interval that can be found in the set R. Like I told you, all each of these interval is within set of real number. I said an interval in the set R is a set which has one of the following four forms. Okay, so if you have to define an interval, it could be any of these. So it depends on the geometry or the topology of the interval uh, you want to define. So we now say if X is a set, you know. If S is set in the real number now, then the characteristic function of E, of e uh, if E is a set, sorry, that's a slip of term. If E is a set, then the characteristic function of E is a function chi E defined by chi E of X is equal to 1 if X is in E. And this chi E of X is equal to 0 if X is, in, uh, is not in E, if X is not in E. So let's look at... Um, Let's look at how we can link up this uh, definition with respect to step function. Let's look at how we can link up this definition with respect to uh, step uh, function. I want to see how we can link up this definition. So let's look at that. Okay. Now we go to, uh, we have defined that. What is a step function? A step function. That is uh, the next uh, thing we want to define. What is the step function? Now, a step function, you know, from the word step function, is a, uh, a function, you know, is a function. A step function is a function. Let's evap by, let's designate a step function by that, you know, which is a finite, which is a finite linear combination a finite linear combination of a characteristic function a finite linear combination of a characteristic uh, function you know that is what what that is what a step function uh, is over uh, interval characteristic functions of uh, intervals 
So thus, so thus the, uh, the step function is what sigma c j of uh, chi p j. Okay, now chi p j. So um, j is taken from one to n. You could say that from that definition set, a step function is a function verbi, which is a finite linear combination of a characteristic function of intervals. You know, we've discussed before what we mean by characteristic function. Now, we use E as a set in uh, the real number, where under E is a set in the interval. Don't forget that the intervals are elements or, or they are sets, you know, in the, the set of real numbers. So if E is a set within that uh, uh, real numbers too, or is E, is a, is, that means E is a set of the interval, okay? So that means uh, the characteristic function uh, linear combination can be written in this way. And the characteristic function's linear combination is uh, invariably referred to as a step function. That is, a step function is a function verified which is a finite linear combination of the characteristic function of uh, intervals. And now, uh, this is written this way. You can see, Let's see that uh, this C substitute J is a real number. It could be a complex number. You know, uh, it's a constant. You know, it's a constant of uh, elements in the real number or what? Uh, it could all equally be scalar, as you can see. So we have C J and uh, we have a characteristic function of uh, E J. So J is taken from one to infinity. I mean to n rather. That's why we call it what? So we call it a finite linear combination. Finite n. So J. Is taken from one to n, okay. So that is that about uh, that. Now, if the endpoints of the interval e j are so, suppose we have the endpoints now, you know, our endpoints in those are uh, in those intervals we, we, we discussed or we've uh, discussed before are uh, a and b, okay. Now, if the endpoints in the interval e j now, if the endpoints in the interval e j are a j, you know, comma b j. So we define the integral of uh, this part. Uh, this is our step function. So, so you can write this. You can write this. If the endpoints of the interval E j are A j B j, then, then. We can write, we can write the integral, the integral of our what? Of our step function as, how do we write the integral? That is, the integral of our step function, you know, it will just be what? Uh, sigma, summation CJ, you know, into bracket BJ minus AJ. J is one for, from, is taken from one to n. So that is uh, if the endpoints. Uh, you know, of the interval EJ at that. Okay, I believe that is uh, that is clear. So let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. I think we are getting how we are linking up uh, uh, each of the uh, uh, terms. We have discussed uh, the intervals as sets. We have discussed uh, the characteristic functions. We have equally discussed the uh, step function. Now, if f is a bounded function defined on an interval a comma b, this is another program. If f is a bounded uh, function defined defined uh, on interval on an interval on an interval a comma b, let's you know this uh, is a closed interval. Okay, comma. This is closed, it's not open, okay? And, uh, and if f is not, you know, too discontinuous, I hope you can still remember when we say a function is continuous. So, uh, then, the Riemann, the Riemann integral, the Riemann integral of f, is defined the Riemann integral of f is defined to be the limit to be the limit to be the limit of the integral 
of the integers of the integers you know, of the integers of step function of uh, step functions step functions which are approximates approximates f now this is another thing that i want you to understand if f is a bounded function defined on an interval suppose we have a f this way suppose we have a f is defined on a bounded function automatically since f is defined on a bounded function i mean sorry on a bounded uh, interval a comma b f is a bounded function okay now Obviously, if f is a bounded function defined on the, the, the interval is bounded, f is automatically bounded. And if f is not too discontinuous, you know, now when we say discontinuity, we know that that's the point at which uh, continuity does not exist. And for a function to be continuous, you know, uh, we know that uh, the limits uh, of uh, that function with respect to a point in the in, uh, domain of the function must be equal to. Uh, the function with respect to the point at which that point, that point in the domain, uh, you know, tends towards another point. So, I will repeat this, and you remember that. And you can equally define limit of a, I mean, continuity of a function with respect to what? Epsilon, you know. So, these are definitions we can give to continuity of a function. Then, the Riemann integral of F, you ought to, uh, by now, have uh, been able to remember the concept of uh, Riemann integration. So Riemann integral and uh, Lebesgue's uh, integral, they have some uh, connections. Why Riemann integral is basically on partitions, you know, uh, Lebesgue's integration actually centers on uh, the set as a whole, okay? So when we, when we proceed in this course, you will understand better. But the basic difference between Riemann integration or Riemann integral and uh, Lebesgue's integral, Lebesgue's integration, is just the domain of their definition. Why partition exists in uh, uh, Riemann integration, it does not exist in the Lebesgue's integration. Lebesgue's integration, you know, uh, actually takes the set, you know, the, 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 takes uh, care of the set entirely. Why Riemann integration takes, you know, care of uh, the partition of the, uh, the domain of, this, of the definition. So, now, then the Riemann integral of F is defined to be the limit of the integral of set uh, step function, which approximates uh, F, which approximates F. So, I believe that's, un that's un understood. So, now, and um, before we go further, in, you know, okay, maybe the next paragraph, this will be discussed. Okay, let's discuss this in the next paragraph. So, I wouldn't like this video to be too long. So, after this paragraph,